going to open up with uh, 1 Corinthians 14, but I don't think I have to. <laughs> we, just, uh, we just experienced that. Um, maybe lay out, uh, well, I need that table. What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. um, thank you, Kevin. Like this, you know, one of the things, and I think I mentioned it when we started off, I've been, um, you know, um, really almost feeling like the duality of us as individual sons and daughters, uniquely gifted, uniquely mantled, um, you know, all that, and, and the bride as a whole, right, um, of which we represent, you know, that in, in our gatherings, right? So, you know, this week and next week, and, and you know, traditionally, I, 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 um, I really, you know, come in October, November, I really begin to say, okay, Father, and I, you know, for whatever reason, it, there, is, there is some sort of spiritual um, uh, occurrence on the turning of the calendar, right, for some reason. I don't know as I understand it. I don't even know if I got it right. Um, but in thinking of, you know, the, the upcoming year, a lot of times, all the time, not a lot of times these last, you know, whatever years. Um, I'm Father, okay, you know, is, is there something you want us to, to know about, you know, going forward, you know? And, um, and so I've, I've got a light word today, very short. Um, next week, though, um, will not be that light and probably not be that short. So enjoy it while it lasts. Um, you know, um, just I feel, I just... I don't know about you guys, but I just really feel just really full right now, you know. I got to look at my notes because I have no idea where I'm going. Um, so for us as individually, I think let's just let's just go there and I'll just, you know, clumsily kind of plow through where I get my my uh, my soul and my spirit, man, kind of recovering a little bit. Um, scripture says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. I just spent, um, you know, three years teaching a master class. Um, I did. I put 312 people through it. Um, and, you know, it was it was not it was not co overtly faith based. But, you know, hopefully with all of us, there is no such thing as non faith based. You know, so anything that I bring, you know, out there is going to have the basis of Jesus life, Jesus Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, Jesus is life. We don't get our version of truth, there is truth, right? And Jesus is it. And, and, and so, you know, that the, the, the master class was based on self-care and others care, right? Year one, self-care, year two, others care. And, um, and it was, it's, and, you know, we really didn't have a hard time filling up the class. First, first year, we just put it out there, 157 people of all walks in life, all ages, 18, 19, all the way up to 60 signed up for, for, for self-care. So a lot of times, you know, if I, if I, I want, you know, when we talk, you know, self-care, sometimes in the Christian world, we say, well, that's, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, egocentric or that's, you know, self-absorbed and it's really not right. We, we, you know, part of the vision of our house or, you know, or the full vision of our house really begins with, um, embracing his presence and empowering his people. Right. So, so like we're, what what we really do as as individuals and as the bride is um you know we 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 build our understanding and then our manifestation of what it is to have jesus inside us being the temple of the holy spirit and when paul uses that word temple of the holy spirit it's not just he doesn't use it lightly man and we're talking about you know how long and what you know you know we have, we're talking about you know a, a culture that believed in the holy of holies the presence of god showing up in the temple the presence himself right so when paul was saying that he's actually making quite a power statement so just i'm going to go through a few things prophetic this year I would just, um, you know, I, I was, I said to Kevin, uh, you know, Jesus gave commands. Uh, Paul really did not. And there's a little bit of a clue as to, you know, who has, you know, ultimate authority, right? Jesus is the cornerstone. And when we look at authority, Jesus is the cornerstone, period. When Paul spoke, he beseeched. So I'm, I'm going to just, I want to beseech you all. Oh, there's, there's, there's three or four things that I want to bring this morning, very short uh, um, and, um, and I'm just asking all of us in this room, young and old, to, to, to hear, to listen, have listening ears on, I see, because I believe the Lord is going to give us 
some, some clues to, to some things, some tools we're going to need, um, you know, going forward. Uh, Matthew talks about several places in Scripture, talks about Jesus being critical of the, the religious leaders who don't quite, you know, can read the signs of the times as, a, as it relates to the weather, but is clueless on the signs of the times as it relates to culture. Now, you know, we all might have some inclinations on culture, but it doesn't take, you know, a very prophetic people to see that we're, we're, we have some perilous times in front of us right here, man. There's just no question about it. Everywhere around is, is you know, danger. Um, we see danger, right? So, so you know, I don't, I'm not going to stay there on that. It's, that, to me, is, is actually, you know, for the believer, is, is close to irrelevant. But, but the Lord does give us some, some, some things, some, some, um, some clues, some ideas that, you know, if, if we take the time to, you know, to, 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 you know, acknowledge his sovereignty in our life and actually begin to, 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 to align our spirit man, right, with, with, with the word, um, you know, there's, there's, um, um, there's, there's glory in it. Right? I don't know if you guys are following me or not. Um, you know, I apologize. I'm, I'm really under the spirit right now. So I'm going to get right into it. All right, let's be a little, all right, I'm going to start with humor, first of all, because this, this, will, this will snap me out of it for sure. So if we're talking prophetically, right, we just did three days of first fruits. We're going to look at our, this is our prophetic board right here. Um, and I'm looking at this, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blown away. Uh, you know, I'm not sure Raiders suck. I'm kind of I'm probably, probably worried, wondering about that word. I'm kind of curious where that comes from. Um, I'm a bit of a doubter on that, right? So probably, but I think we got a, we got a Raiders fan over here. So uh, I don't know if we're talking about Oaken Raiders or who are we talking about? Horsehead Raiders. What's the Horsehead's name? Are they the Raiders? Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Unless we have some Melbourne or Horseheads going things there. But, you know. <laughs> So, so if we're gonna, if if we really want to look for some clues about what 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 heaven's talking about in this season, we got to open up our ears, right? We got to open up our ways. And I like what Lee brought. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to hear from the Father, and and you know, one of the ways is from our from our peers, from our brothers and fellow brothers and sisters in authority. So before I get into what I'm hearing, I'm gonna I want to read some things that some of our brothers and sisters to hear, and I don't know who wrote what, but um, but there's some there's some real. Um, there's some real consistencies here that line up with things that I've heard another have heard out here. Um, there's an I love Raiders. What's the with the Raiders? Is this all horsehead stuff? All right. Is that Hannah? No, it can't be Hannah. Hannah's not a Raider. Yeah. <laughs> all right, gotcha. So, you know, here's a reset, right? So I'm, I'm just going to, I'm not going to read these whole things, but here's another reset. Um, when I start seeing duality, and messaging from the brethren and sisters. I'm starting to pay attention to that, right? Um, we've got unity. Um, we've got transformation and transformer. Uh, boy, I know where that came from. Oh, Trav. Yeah. So in worship, uh, right at the end, Trav, um, and this is the way I heard it. He says, I'm pulling him out of his cage. Now, stay tuned with a little bit of that because, you know, brother, that's, just, that's, that's, pretty, that's a pretty cool word. Um, and, you know, I've, I've got a similar word today that I'll share on with something he said to me that I'm going to share with all you guys. Um, when we're, as you guys all know, when we're in a cage, sometimes we put some of our energies to fighting that doggone cage. So when we're let out of the cage, we no longer have to put any energy to fighting that cage. And, and Trav, I think your heart and Bethany in, in particular, um, you guys, I think particularly this is going to speak a little bit, you know, more to something in you that's been building and building and building. But when the Lord says, I'm pulling out of his cage, you know, he didn't say, tell Travis, you know, it's time to come out of the cage. He didn't say, he says, I'm pulling Travis out of his cage. So, you know, brother, I just want to I want to forward that to you. I think it's up to us as a house to just acknowledge that. And, um, you know, Rick, you hear it clear. You hear that? Lord said, pull him out of his cage. So um, I guess we're going to have to figure something out on that. Right. Because I, I don't know if he's talking about drum cage, by the way, but that might have some of it. Um, Isaiah 62, togetherness, friendship. I'm going to skip this one. Uh, let's see. Jesus says, you are my beloved. And a lot of the set list today was, was really based on that. We were going to do, uh, I can, uh, what was the other one we were going to do? Uh, 
there was another song we were going to do. We dropped it. I can't remember. Uh, oh, How He Loves Us, right? Um, there's, a, there's, I think the Father really has, you know, for us right now is a baseline, right? We're not going to be able to get to where we're going next week if we don't understand some baselines of what we're talking about today. Um, this one here, and I don't remember where this came from, but somebody told me about this one. This is, import this is a big one. Um, I saw, and this goes to something that Lee was also referring to. She saw a picture of unity. I think I remember who brought this. She saw a wheel with spokes, right? And, um, and actually a clock as well. So, so, so I'm trying to remember just how it was, um, it was given to me. But actually what I saw, what, what I was told was I saw a clock and the clock had, you know, big numbers, small numbers. We got, you know, hours and minutes and seconds in a clock. We have big lines and small lines and all this stuff. And one of the things in the vision that, that was relayed to me that the Lord said that every line is exactly as important as the other lines. So if you can envision um, a clock, you can envision this. Oh boy. Well, we got some raiders over here. What is this? <laughs> got to start locking the doors. <laughs> I don't even know if this is going to work now. If we got a clock, boom, here's some hands. It's, you know, let's say it's 2 o'clock, noon, 1, you know, all the way around here. But, man, we got all these other little lines, right? Then the second hands. When God's saying it doesn't matter how big of a line you are, your importance is equally as, business, as, as important as every line in the clock, that's a big word right there. That's really important because what happens in mankind is sometimes we feel like we're not relevant. And what the Lord's saying in 2024 is you are relevant. You are as relevant as anybody you think is relevant. Oh, come on, man. So that's, last, that's next week. Otherwise, I'm just going to launch. Right, that that we're, we're going to really get into that next week, but 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 this is this is a really good confirming word because this might even be different because this is wheel with spokes, spokes do not interact with one. Precision timepiece, yeah, it might be the same. God's perfect pace, yeah. One of the things that that was relayed to me in that word was that that it requires the clock requires all those little lines to move at, at God's perfect timing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, leave that there. Yeah. Anything else on here? Zoe is my favorite, all right. Another Raiders, what does it think we got? Um, a gush of your breath over our eyes. Mm. All right, that was my introduction. Now my conclusion. <laughs> Chris Valentin tells a story in it's like probably my favorite story he ever tells. Um, and so there's, th there's three words that, I, that, I, that I'm hearing, right? And, you know, one of them I'm hearing personally, I'll get into that. Two of them I'm hearing out there in the world. Um, word one is reliance slash lean. And when it's lean, lean on him. Uh, uh, word two is simplify. That's, that's showing up all over the place. And, um, and I'll get into, you know, what he's, what he's relayed on me. And, and the word is declutter. But uh, Chris's word goes something like this. It's a stinking riot. So some college, I think it was like USC, reached out to Valentin and said, hey, I'm, uh, you know, we want to give you an honorarium doctorate, right? So now we're talking about Dr. Valentin, right? This is just a brilliant story. And so he's pretty happy about that. Dr. Valentin's got a good ring to it, he feels like. So he's like bragging, telling people, yeah, they're going to give me a doctor. I'm going to be a doctorate. And about 2 o'clock in the morning, now, there's, a, there's, there's something for us in just this part right here. The Lord wakes him up in the middle of the night and he's this, makes this statement to him. And this is a quote. So I hear you're getting your doctorate. All the people in the room laughing right now are laughing because that's sometimes the way God does this. Right? There's a, lot, there's a lot being said in that statement right there. And Chris knew he was in trouble right off the bat. So I hear you're getting your doctorate. And Chris goes, uh, oh, yeah, the college is going to give me my doctorate. And Dr. Valentin. And he says, no, you're not. And Chris is like, yeah, but, you know, I already told my mother. She's pretty proud of me. And, you know, <laughs> he said, you're not getting your doctorate. Because if you get your doctorate, you're going to think you can do this without me. And we both know that you can't. Believe it or not, that story is prophetic word number one today. He knows us individually. Now, does that mean that anybody getting a doctorate 
uh, you know, uh, what do you call that? Like a honorary. honorary doctorate. Yeah. Shouldn't get a doctor? Is he saying nobody should get those? No. He's saying Chris shouldn't get those. Why? Because he knows Chris. Right? You know, sometimes God tells us no. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like he tells me no a lot. Like, man, I feel like I've been told no for like the last five years, six years. The one thing he told me yes to, I wish he hadn't have told me yes, because I'd kind of like to take it back and, ask, and say, I wish I hadn't asked for that. The one thing. Uh, I, I changed my mind. No, you asked for it. I'm giving it to you. We go through seasons sometimes, right? We just don't feel like, you know, hey, Father, you're just not cooperating with, with, um, with the plan here, with, with where I'm going. You know, word number one is reliant. The reason why God was saying that is, like, listen, man, you got to stay reliant on me. Your wisdom is like folly to me, man. Right? It's in your weakness that I make you strong. I. Right? Do not glory in your weakness, your strength. Do not glory in your riches. Do not glory in your wisdom. Right? So, so like, where we're at right now, this is something that Robin and I are really um, having to come to terms with really stark realities right now in the season of life we're in lean on him period and even when the program seems to be you know pretty well disheveled lean reliant in a place where no matter where you're at what's what's in your heart right now what are you what are you what are you struggling with what what what's the issues of the day lean reliant 2024 right lean and reliant rely on him Right? Because he knows you. And, you know, you know, who knows if he's saying no anyway? Right? Because what he might be saying is, well, yes, but. There's, there's things that, there's, there's like, like, part of the reason why I got the order here of today versus the next week. There's, there's some God habits that we need to have in place to be able to steward the more. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a reality of that, right? We, we, we miss things as, as, as Jesus people because we get ahead sometimes of our, of our, of our mantle or our, 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 our calling. We're, we're, and this is going to get into where simplifying the clutter come in, I believe, right? We're focused on this over here, and because we're focused on this over here, the very thing that we're supposed to be focused on, our job, the very thing that we're tasked to do, we're not doing well because we got this focus over here, right? And what God's saying right now, well, I really still want you to do this task right here, but because you're distracted with whatever, we all have different forms of distraction, so reliant. We, we have to, I believe, brothers and sisters, this is a joyful thing that we can do. Is we, 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 it's, it's, it's cool when we could just say, oh, Father, you can have it all. You can have it all, Lord. Well, yes and no. We can take it. Don't fall for that. Sovereignty is an offer. We can take sovereignty. Oh, boy. That's not really I wanted to go here, but, right? When we say you can have it all, we're saying, Father, you're sovereign. He'll take it all if he's sovereign. But he's not taking responsibility for your sovereignty. I'm going to do this, Father, rather regardless of what you think at all, right? This is, this, is, this is the life of a believer. We all have this kind of stuff going on. You know, this is, this is the process, right? Present fullness. It's not, it's not, he's not worried about it. Unless, unless, you know, we're just going to let pride get in our way. The simplify thing. I've been hearing that for a while. I think Lee brought a simplify meth message over the summer. It's probably the first time that I heard the word simplify. And I've heard it from Charlie Coker and Chris Valentin. Just FYI, I, I try to plug in with prophetic voices around the nation and around the world. Right, because what I'm what I'm looking for is 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 like is like what are what what's God speaking globally? If just a little clue here, if if all we do is get all our information from a single source, probably trouble. Right, it's a big world out there, man. Simplify, um, you know, I, just from a coaching standpoint, um, there's 
I can see where the Father says simplify because it's gotten complicated. Right? We, we, listen, if you've been around a while, all you have to do is look over to Israel. And if you've been around a while, you can see that there's things being structured over there that we've been being taught about and heard about scripturally for a long time. Right? I mean, we can't say that our political system here in the States is, you know, like, I don't know if any of us are bra bragging on our political system. Right? It's complicated. What does simplify do? As a coach, it gets us back to our fundamentals. Like a lot of times, if I was going to get into a lose, losing streak, and I, you know, you know, it, it's, I didn't, if I, losing streak to me is two in a row, honestly, right? So if, I, if, I'm, if I'm now two in a row, I call that a trend. And so I was, I was darn well going to have the team going to start looking at where the fundamentals are sliding, right? Now, can we get beat by just playing two better teams? For sure. But, you know, I don't really care to get beat by, I don't really like the concept of there being a better coach out there. So um, I'm going to do something like, you know, fundamentals, athletic, you're right? Athletic position, right? We get athletic, loose, right? Right down here, ready to do, ready to do business. We're going to get athletic. We're going to get back to our fundamentals athletically, right? That's what we're going to do. What's our fundamental spiritually? Man, abide. That's a great word. Jesus says this, if you abide in me and my word abides in you. So I like, the, I like that a word abide as long as we're talking abiding him and abiding in his word. Scripture. Genesis of Revelation. I'm going to give you a little bit of a challenge. I don't know where you're at your scripture reading right now, but for me, I mean, the Lord slammed me with 1 Corinthians. I didn't see it coming, right? You know who first gave me 1 Corinthians? Jacob Grove, Right? Going through some stuff last, last spring, Jacob Grove calls me and says, 1 Corinthians. And I'm like, yeah, fine, great, thanks. Right? I basically ignored him, right? Um, he, then he gives me a scripture verse like three weeks later, 1 Corinthians, with a scripture verse in it, and it hit me there. And then all of a sudden, you know, about two weeks after that, the Lord says, hey, Clabberhead, 1 Corinthians. <laughs> now, I could have, I could have, I could have, I could have demonstrated to the atmosphere that my spirit man is aligned in community. By the first time Jacob said to me, 1 Corinthians, I could have gone to 1 Corinthians, right? Watch familiarity, man. But I didn't. Now, when he sent me some verses in 1 Corinthians, I did notice it. But then two weeks later, the Lord's like, dude, 1 Corinthians. So I wanna, I wanna, um, I'm just gonna. When when the Lord does that to me as as, as a mantle in this house, I'm gonna give it to you, right? I don't think He's just giving it to me. I'm gonna give it to you. Now you're gonna find some weird things in there. You know, I think somewhere in Corinthians it says something like this: I would that even those of you who are married would behave as though you're not. Now, if you're not happy with your spouse right now, that's like all right. <laughs> right. But but we have to put scripture. In with the character of God. So when Paul's making a statement like that, you know, when you're in 1 Corinthians, I can promise you, you're going to hit some head scratchers in there. Don't just brush them over. Don't throw them up on the shelf. Well, that makes no sense. Or, yeah, that feeds my flesh, man. I'm going to use it this way as a bullet for my gun. No, not what he's doing. Do a deep dive. What is he really saying? Is it a priority? Do, do those who are single have less on their plate relationally than those who are married? Can they, you know, boy, this is, this is going to get me in so much trouble. I'm going to start, boy, don't, hey, put your stones down because I'll, I'll finish my thought here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Rob's not here. She's in the back yet, is she? Sometimes our priorities just plain need to be Jesus, man. Right? Sometimes it just gets right down to that. Jesus. We have all these things in our lives that are our limiters. Is Jesus our limiter? Probably not. All right, we're wrapping up. And I'll conclude so in this barrage of 
observations, Seinfeld style, you actually get something out of it. You know, I've got in here, and I didn't bring this up, you know, in the fundamentals in athletics, one of the things that we do is, you know, we, we, we make sure, not just here, but we either have our head on a swivel or we cover our flanks and our back, right? I put it in there, so I'm going to bring it up. What does that mean? You know, when we're alone and we're in a brawl, you got to have your head on a swivel because you never know when where the next blow's coming. But when we're in community, our flanks are covered, our back's covered. Community is important. And the last thing I got, and then um, maybe we'll do another worship song, unless you guys are done worshiping. In the way this, the way this got brought to me, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna offer. Yeah, you guys can come up. By the way, um, the way this guy, um, way this got brought to me, I wanna offer to you guys. Um, I began to feel, I, I knew that I was in over my head. Uh, what's the year? It's a 24, right? So, gosh, going into 2023, 2023, I was in way over my head, and I knew it. And I really knew it. And I couldn't, because I had said yes to so many things, to so many people, to so many good things, um, I, I, um, I was in over my head. I was robbing my family. I was robbing you guys. I was robbing everybody at the end of the day, right? Because I, I said yes to too many good things. And I knew it, but I couldn't find my way out. And what the Lord did was declutter me. So when I'm bringing the word declutter, this, 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 the other words here I've heard from others, right? I'm bringing this one from me. Because of the way this came to me, I'm bringing it to you, right? He took, he took it out of my hands to do, which means it's important. And he began to systematically take what I thought was really stuff that my heart, I put a lot of heart, mind, and soul in, a lot. You know, I, I don't, I don't, we, know, we know each other, right? So I'm a seven-day-a-week guy. Ask my family. And it, I just begin to get stripped down. And, it, and, and, it, and it, it, was, it was awful, dude. Still, in some respects, I'm still, like, a little bit sore out of it. I'm like, dude, you know, I wish you could have did that the other way, another way, right? Because some of it was public. I mean, you guys don't know, but out there, there's people that know. If he's like, son, your priorities, how, how do you prioritize your day? When, when your mind, when your daughter wants to talk to you, your wife wants to talk to you in, you know, 168 hours a day, and they're talking to you, and you're not present because your mind's somewhere else. That's clutter, man. I don't care how good it is. So there's the last piece, declutter, Right? What, what have you said yes to that you're not, that in this season of your life, you're not supposed to be doing? What's, what respond, what have you said, maybe another way to put this, what have you said yes to that is your responsibility, yet you're taking all this other responsibility? Right. Why? Because I like the responsibility. I want to be the man. I want to be the one. I want to be that. I want this. I want that. Uh, really? Yeah. Master of many things, or what do you, what's that word? Something, of, jack of all trades, master of none. Good enough to have the position because you're willing and you walk in a little bit of wisdom so people will go ahead and say, hey, there's, you know, you know workers are few, right? So we're going to go ahead and observe it and then you just get taken from, 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 willingly, give, give, give. First book I wrote, I used to stay, I used, bragged on the statement. My wife said, you know, I had a friend of mine who was speaking on the word of the Lord, said, Dave, you're being stupidly generous. I was just, I, I, was, I was making bank, you guys probably have heard this. So I was making bank, and I couldn't throw the money away fast enough. He said, you're being stupidly generous. And, and you know, Robin and I, we laughed about this. And I don't mind if we're stupidly generous. But the problem with that word stupidly generous is it has the word stupid in it. 
We sometimes cheat ourselves. It's like, it's like we think we can make a deal. And here's the deal. Because I'm doing this great thing over here, I can skate over here. It doesn't work that way, man. You follow what I'm saying on this? We can't cut corners because we're doing the work. Well, I don't know. If, I'm hoping that kind of is, I hope, hope that's kind of hitting in some folks. So declutter. In this season, why, you know, my question to him is, Father, why, why is it so important to rely on it right now? First of all, I'll just tell you, I see danger everywhere, straight up. Right? I, I went into 2023 seeing danger. I still danger now. Right? I can, I can, it's not, it doesn't take too hard to see that, that, that hey, we, we've got, we've got, things, things could get very uncomfortable, right? We're Americans, for crying out loud. I want to say spoiled Americans, but then I might get thrown rocks at. I want to, I'm going to use this word, first world problems. There is one area that, that I, I, I have been walking in the last bunch of years. I'm getting to see some not first world problems. I'm getting to see some, some real stuff. Some real, real bad suffering, bad stuff that, for the most part, a lot of us are buffered from. Th I'm seeing stuff that most of us don't even know anything about. So there it is. I don't want to leave on that note. I like that, the lyrics of that one word, for the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Because, you know, there's something in that. Because I'm, I'm not saying, Father, like, you know, for the sake of the world, be intimate with me. Because I'm going to say, for the sake of me, <laughs> be intimate with me. Father, I, you know, it's that, Father, we're, we're dependent. We're interdependent on each other. We're totally dependent on him. Yeah. All right, that's... That's, that's, that's good. Like ne next week, we're going we're gonna to hit 1 Corinthians 9. And, and let's, like, I, I just want to beseech you, brothers and sisters, you know, in, you know, 2024, just kicking off, you know, let's, 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 let's you know, do a review, you know, whiteboard out your week. Where, where's your time going? Let's, let's make sure, if we're going to simplify, let's make sure we're getting back to some fundamentals, where we're at in our scripture reading, in our pursuit of the Most High. There's hunger on here somewhere. Yeah, oh, big one, right next to Raiders suck. <laughs> Should I erase that, man? It's just bugging me. All right. Lean on him, friends. Yes, on, on the stuff going on in your hearts and your minds. Yes. But it's cool when everything is going really good and you lean on him. Human nature sometimes... We get in these needs of having to sim fly declutter because things are going pretty good, so we just keep saying yes. Lean on him. Simplify. What does that mean? Next week, we'll hit 1 Corinthians 9, which is going to be very similar to where Lee was today. Somebody else said something to me, and Bruce and Tiffany two weeks ago. Yeah, probably, Tiff, probably if you can remember what you said to me two weeks ago, that'd be a good word to be ready to bring next week. Do you remember what that is? I'll remind you. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> All right. Let's get rid of this board. You guys want to do one more? <laughs>